required. Now, then let's go ahead. I need to talk about some long ideality of subtrusal conduction, right? There are many long ideas. One of them is subtrusal. So again, I think I mentioned before, but let me remind you, right? We always have a simple picture, VG, ID, in linear scale. We always say that, oh, this is VTH. Right? Before VTH, I don't have current. After VTH, I have a lot of current. But if you try to make this in log scale, this is log, uh, not even, I mean, we put in log scale, right? You see this uh, different, one, 10 e minus 12, 10 e minus 10, right? So for example, if you are not sure, this distance is what? 10 to a power nine x difference. One billion times difference. Although you only see this one with such a short distance, but it's talking of one billion time. Definitely here is nice zero for this guy, right? Like myself, I only have $100. Bill Gates have $100 billion. For, for, for he, I mean, he's here, I'm here. For him, I'm, I'm, I just don't have money. But if you put in loss scale, I, do have $100, right? So if there are 1 billion of me, we will be richer than Bill Gates to, altogether, right? These are the power consumption. So in reality, your device does not go to zero. How does it go? It go up with exponentially. You see that it has QVG divided by NKT. It still depends on the temperature also. And it has an N, N is equal to one plus CD over CR. So we are not talking about device physics, so I don't want to uh, explain or derive this, but basically this is what it means. I have a capacitor here. This is the gate, correct? This capacitor is CR. And then I also have a depletion capacitance. This is CD. Remember that we go from accumulation, which has a lot of hole, to depletion, which has no carrier, and eventually to inversion. We have a depletion region, and this is the uh, capacitance. So whatever we apply to the gates does not really apply to the surface of the channel. There's a deduction due to this N factor. It's a capacitor divider, right? So. Let's think about if this makes sense. If I have a very large C ox, what happened to N? N is almost equal to one. Then it means this slope is going to be very steep because N is one. It changed very fast, which makes sense. If you have a good capacitor and you have good gate control, I can turn it on and off very easily, right? So what is the meaning of then we come up with something called S, subtrusal slope. So what is this? It's talking about the delta G, VG required to change ID by 10X, which is one decade. So the unit is what? Mini volt per decade. That is why we have this unit. What does it mean? For example, let's say this one, I don't know how much, let's say this is 0 0.15 volt. Okay, it's 10 to the power 10. Let's say when I reach eight, which is 100 times, right? Let's say this is 0 0.35 volt. So how much is needed to change 100 times? Can someone tell me? How much VG I need to change in order to change the current by 100 times? Two times two. Say again. Two or what? How many volt? How many volt do I need to change? I go from 0.15 to 0.1.35. It changed from one e minus ten to one e minus eight. So how many times? 
how, ma how much voltage do I need to increase in order to increase the current by 100 times? Uh, 0.1 volt? 0 0.2. 0 0.2. Right, 0 0.2 volt for 100 times means two decade. Okay, so how many volt for one decade? 0.1. It's just 0.1 for one decade. So as a result, the subtract so slow is equal to 100 millivolt per decade. Okay, for a transistor, what is an ideal transistor, right? This is the ideal transistor that I want. Okay, which I want to have the subtrestle which slope is what? Zero volt per decade. I only increase and change the voltage a little is switch on. This is the ideal transistor we have been thinking in our mind. We really love that. You may see that what is the point of doing that? Think about this, for this two curve, this one I have the same on current, but how about off current when Vg equals zero? This one is essentially zero. This one's do one E minus 11. is a lot of time higher than the leakage. This one is consuming a lot of leakage power if I don't design it well. So that is the point. That is all I want to say about subtraction slope. IDV for a transistor is not ideal. It's not ideal in the sense that even at VG equals zero, it's not zero current. It's very small, only 1 billion times maybe, less than the on current. But because we have too many transistors, this power consumption is hurting us. And that is what's stopping us from scaling the device. That's why we have this high K dielectric. Remember high K just now someone asked? In that time, we try to make C all large so that we have a steeper slope. Okay, any questions? And in particular, I really want you to understand what is subtraction slope. It means how many voltage, gate voltage you need to change in order to reduce the current by 10 times or increase by 10 times, it's the same. Right. That's how good is your control over your channel. Transistor is transfer resistor. Control the drain current by gate voltage. Okay, I assume you understand. If not, just let me know. Okay. Now, then what else? Just like the dial, I talk about uh, parasitic resistance. Naturally, we do have parasitic resistance here, right? Because this is the gate. This is the source. This is drain. Well, in reality, you have the contact here. This is the metal. From here to here, you do have resistance, just like here, right? The current actually go, go from the metal. Let me just call this aluminum. You have contact resistance and then you have the resistor, right? So you do have RS and RD. What's a big deal? Just like the dial. The real voltage drop across the dial is not what you apply. The real voltage drop across the source string, uh, the transistor is actually here. As a result, VGS is not equal to VGS because there's a potential drop. For example, this is zero, this might be zero one. Let's say this is one volt, then VGS supposed to be one volt, but VGS effective is only 0 0.9 volt. So you get smaller current. That's one thing, okay? Another is that, this poly has resistance also. That's why we go to metal gate. The current go from here and you do have a huge resistor along here. So for, for example, you apply uh, two volt here. This, when you reach here, you may be 1.9 volt. 
so you don't have the current drive that you want. You may say that, what if there's no leakage? Yeah, for DC, they are the same, but we're doing very high frequency, this class, right? So this becomes a RC delay. Is this okay? So when you do a, a digital circuit, you need to think about this along ideality, okay? Now, so because of this, you see that we do the SPICE model, right? This is a simple one, level three. Uh, we'll capture all of this, right? For example, you have the trestle voltage, the sheet resistance, the saturation velocity, we already discussed, and these are the transconductance. We also depends on the junction capacitance. Remember the overlap capacitance, this one, junction capacitance, right? Side wall. And then the width, the channel length and width there will be some, uh, not the exactly as what you draw because of fabrication, oxide thickness, et cetera. Okay, so this is a simple spice, spice model, but you see that these are all related to the physics we have learned. Right. And here in particular, I want you to uh, pay attention to this is that uh, your draw, you have this drawn length, right? So in, in your simulation, you are going to not, not, you don't really need to do this, but that is done to you automatically. But I hope that you can aware that it has the area and also the perimeter. You use this one to calculate all the junction capacitor. If you don't do the layout, you do need this one. So it knows that what are the junction area, source string area, so it can calculate the layout, uh, calculate the capacitor, the sidewall, and also the junction capacitors.